Hey everybody, it's Crystal. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I'm actually going to be sharing with you um, a recent uh, episode. Well, it's not the whole episode. It's an excerpt from a podcast, a podcast that I do with my very good friend, very good friend, Brian Fisher. And this podcast is called Spirit Pop. And in it, we talk about all things pop culture with a spiritual twist. And every episode, we have something called the metaphysical corner in which we talk about whatever spiritual thing we're interested in that week. And this week, we had a discussion about haunted houses, haunted houses, demons, and dominion. Dominion. So it was a really cool conversation. I think it's right up your alley, and I wanted to share it with you. I also want to let you know that in the description below are links so that you can listen to Spirit Pop. And we also have, Spirit Pop also has a YouTube channel where we upload all of the full episodes. We also have a clip channel when uh, where we just kind of break up the podcast because this podcast was almost two hours long. We just talk. We talk about everything and we have so much fun, but we break it up into little clips so that you can watch it in smaller doses. The links to both of those YouTube channels are in the description and also the link to listen to our podcast. Please, if you would, be so kind, like, and share, and subscribe, and help us to grow our Spirit Pop family. All right, enough about me. Let's get into today's video. Yeah. I think we should move into Metaphysical Corner. 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 Yes. Corner. Yes. All right. What do we got for the corner well, today? What I'd like to talk about today for Metaphysical mm. Corner, how about we talk about haunted houses, like demonic energy, oh. and dominion. Oh, I love talking about dominion. That's my favorite thing. Well, haunted houses. Have you ever lived in a haunted house? Um, I can't say I can't say haunted in the Hollywood version of a haunted mm -hmm. house where the house is killing me and I can't get out of it, but right. I've had spiritual activity in a home and, okay. and it wasn't anything frightening. It was like, you know, cabinets opening up. Um, one time, all of the water in the house went off simultaneously. So all the faucets came on and the toilets flushed. Yeah, that's th weird. It was weird, and and um, I did have a ghosty in 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 my house that would make my coffee for me. I'm not kidding. What so do you mean? I was. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, I mean, the ghosty didn't <laughs> scoop out. The, but what? It was the old fashioned coffee maker that wasn't on a timer. So okay. I would just pour the water, put the grounds in, and then yeah. when I would get up in the morning, I'd go Got downstairs, it. press the button, go get ready for work, and then come back and get a cup of coffee. Yeah. And when I started doing that. Well, boom, bang, bing, bang, boom. Right. I was in my bed one morning and I just started to wake up and I hear, <sighs> I'm like, what? That sounds like my coffee maker. I go downstairs. The coffee's already made. I could smell it halfway down the stairs. Oh my God. That's so sweet. Thank and, you, and, Ghosty. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it couldn't, it was it, like, it was fresh coffee. It, mm -hmm. you know, I mean. Could I have hit the button the night before? Maybe, and it could have sat there all night. But I heard that. No, you that heard last, it. Yeah. yeah. And so how I know is mm -hmm. because one morning I got up and I was downstairs. I was doing a few other things before I even went to the kitchen and the coffee started making itself. Wow. Yeah. So that's so, so you had like a butler ghosty. I had a butler had like ghosty. A, a, I had chef, a, friend, a personal a chef, chef ghosty. I mean, I wish they would have cooked for me. Oh my God. But, not um, all ghosts are bad. Ghosts no, are bad. No, absolutely rap. not. Yeah. But I mean, the, the most, like the weirdest, oddest thing that's ever happened was cabinet doors, like cupboard, kitchen cupboards, all open. Just, I mean, every single one wide open. And were I you just, in the room when they opened, or did, like, did you walk into the room and all of a sudden they were all open? I, so I walked in and they were all open, but one just had opened. Like I walked in. So when you walked in my kitchen at the time, if you walked in, all of the cabinetry was over here. Mm -hmm. Then there was a refrigerator and a little quasi island and then some cabinetry yeah. here. Everything was all open. There was one cabinet right on the side and I saw it like out of the corner move or, or I saw something moving. So then I looked and it was like, it was like, it like did like that. Like it just finished the open. Oh my gosh. And I was like, Carolyn, 
<laughs> That's poltergeistic. So yeah. w- was this like, were you a kid or was this your, in an adult I was an adult. You... So, oh, I, um, so it's you. You're the, you're the poltergeist. Apparently. You. And one other thing happened that was really wild. I, I had a friend over. We were mm-hmm. cleaning because I had just moved in. And we were cleaning and putting some things away. And there were a few tchotchkes left by the previous owner. The previous owner was a friend of the family. She died in the mm-hmm. house. And um, my mother bought the house because she didn't, you know, who's going to be your new neighbor kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, right. I'm like, and I was young. And I'm like, let me let me go over there. I'll, I'll pay the mortgage. I'll live there. That'll get me out. And this is before I decided, you know, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. So my friend was over helping me and she had these, the, the lady that lived there had these clowns. They were not cute. They were kind of creepy Already and they were, and they were bad. dolls. And they, a lot of them were like dolls yeah. and, and, oh, and it no. was just, they weren't, they weren't cute and they looked a little cheap, whatever. Well, she was talking about them. The burners on the oven turned on and whooshed up. It was a gas stove. And I said, see, you don't talk about other people's <laughs> things. <laughs> And I just said, her name was Betty. I said, oh, Betty. I said, no. I said, she didn't mean it. I said, lovely things. I will keep them. And I did not get rid of those last three things. I kept them because I was like, I don't want her to, you know what I mean? I don't want to suffer the wrath of someone. But she came to me that night. And, um, and I was laying cause I stayed in the master. That was her room. And I was, I just laid down in bed and I was just, you know, looking up and there I saw her floating in a, in a, like a peach colored flowy, almost like a nightgown type thing. It was just flowy. She was just standing there, just staring, not standing there, but floating there, just looking at me like down on me. And I'm like, hi. And I'm like, I love your house. I'm happy to be here. I'm like, stay as long as you want. Right. You know, whatever. So this is the funny thing. The next day I was having coffee with my mother and I was explaining to her what had happened with the, the, the burner and all of that. And she said, maybe it was Betty. And I said, it was because I saw her. And she said, hmm. And she said, well, what did she look like? Explain what she looked like. And she said, oh my God. And I'm like, what? She said, that's the dress she was wearing in her casket. Oh my I gosh. didn't go to the funeral. I didn't know. Right. And, and so, and I'm like, well, then she was really there. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm hoping she understands, you know, I love the house. You know, I love your yeah. tchotchkes. And that was that. But I mean, I've had other things, but yeah, those are, those are a couple of them. <laughs> that's, that's a haunted, that's a legitimate haunted house. But that's sweet, though. Yeah, it was, she was I probably didn't just feel checking on you. And I think with ghosts, I think they try to give us evidences that they're around. Like maybe the gas burner. Like, hey, I'm here. I'm listening to this conversation, or I'm lis- I'm watching what you're doing. And but why then is that when bitch they... talking about my clowns? <laughs> right. Don't get rid of my clowns and my cheap dolls. No offense, Betty. No offense. But I think that they give us these little signs, and then we get so scared. Some people get so freaked out and scared that they then stop giving us any signs because they don't want to yeah. scare us. They just yeah. want to, in a way that, that we can notice, let us know that they're there. So that's you really know, sweet. You know, that lady gave me my, uh, which was so weird. It was my 12th birthday and she, I was leaving. I was, I think, taking a walk up the street. She said, come here. I want to give you something. She said, I know it's your birthday. She hands me a book. The book is a really old book called The Psychic Sciences. Oh, and okay. it had all kinds it's of things my kind in there. of book card reading palmistry pendulum um wow. reading regular playing cards gypsy cards domino like all kinds of things that you can use to to mm-hmm. you know divine um you know the rods you know divining for water and, yeah. and th- you know natural things it was i mean she didn't know this about me at all and i said why are you giving me this and she said this book is for you Oh, she knew. Which really further deepened my interest in this sort of thing because my grandmother was just starting to teach me some things. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. So, that was wow. interesting. Thank that, you, that Betty. I, yeah. So, she what about you? you? on the road. What about Well, me? I mean, I mean, you've had probably millions. Not really. I mean, I grew up in a really traumatic situation with, with um, my parents. Like, my father was a substance abuser and my mom was, a, you know, a victim of his abuse and also a substance abuser. So we grew up in a few homes. We moved around, but there was a lot of dark energy because of, I think, the abuse. And so my theory is that um, when you sustain really negative, dark energy, that that energy doesn't just dissipate because energy never just goes away. It becomes something. And 
it becomes thought forms. It becomes these patterns of energy that start to collect in your home. And if you continue to feed them with your energy, they become intelligent and start to knock around and do things. And this is what a poltergeist actually is. And a poltergeist or these evidences that are happening outside of, of you actually originate inside of you. So I think my father was a generator of these thought forms. I think my mother in her misery was a generator of this. And so I, I just grew up in that darkness and I, more so I think my like father was haunted. I remember one night we were in, living in this, when I tell you it was a shack, man, it was a shack made of plywood that didn't have electricity or running water. I mean, we were poor living out in the jungle of Hawaii and my father was drinking like he always did and there was no we had like a kerosene lantern and he was really drunk and I was having a conversation with him at that time I had been going to church Christian church and so I was trying to talk to him a little bit about saving him or something I'm sure I was trying to bring some Jesus into the matter and he started talking to me in the most blasphemous obscene way and I could see in his eyes just like a like a spirit like I I felt deeply outside of even my religious indoctrination I felt like this man is like possessed with something there's a spirit in there that's animating and when he drinks the spirit kind of comes out of him and starts screwing up my life and screwing up all of our lives and so my father just kind of was the haunted person um, I, I had all kinds of spiritual experiences as a, as a child. My father, at the same time, was very psychic, very psychic. He was an animist. He believed, I mean, he was born in Hawaii. He believed, you know, everything had a spirit, like rocks had a spirit and trees had a spirit. And he was actually quite spiritual. He was just distorted because of his alcoholism and his drug abuse. <clears throat> but he was very psychic. And so when I would come to him with my little girl observations in the world, like I'm seeing these beings in this tree or I'm seeing energy around people like he absolutely believed it and was able to communicate with me and give me information that I needed as a child in order to live in this kind of spiritual ecosystem so on the one hand he was very helpful in this way but on the other hand he brought a lot of uh, bad <laughs> bad mm -hmm. energy into my life um, so I don't know that my spiritual experiences with different beings had anything to do with him i just was a psychic child yeah. but he did he did support me in that um but you mentioned dominion and we should yeah. probably explain what dominion is absolutely Dom <clears throat> dominion is the energy that we run inside of ourselves when we are in alignment with like our higher self like our soul self like when we know that we are spiritual people and i'm here for a reason and i'm connected to something that's much greater than myself and outside of this dimension, like when we live in that way, we live in a power position. And I think that some people have scary spiritual experiences with ghosts and poltergeists, and they feel powerless. And they feel like, oh, these ghosts are doing this to me, or these bad dreams are happening to me, or this bad energy is around me. When if they just switched into their divinity, their dominion, right, like their soul self, they wouldn't have any problems. They really wouldn't have any problems. And the moment that I learned about who I truly was as a spiritual being and became powerful in that way, all that stuff, shadow beings, knocks on the, you know, knocks on the wall, scary things that used to happen in my life, those things just went away because the world of spirit always obeys who you feel yourself to be. And that's so important to me. Like the world of spirit always obeys who you feel yourself to be. So if you feel yourself to be a victim or like afraid, then the world of spirit, meaning all the beings and earthbounds and ghosts, they respond to your fear in a, in a way that causes more of that for you. But if you're interacting in the world of spirit from a power position, like, no, 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 no. This is my experience. You don't just to get to roll up in my house, shadow person, and start messing with me. No, 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 no. When you're coming from that place, they obey your power. That's what dominion is. And a lot of my evidences, my paranormal evidences, kind of stopped when I started living in my dominion. That doesn't mean I don't have spiritual experiences, but they're much different. They're yeah. you know, angelic, they're guides, yeah. there's meditation, there's dimensional travel, there's all that kind of cool stuff, but none of the fearful stuff. Uh, believe me, I am not... 
look, I, I always get so, um, I get so crazy, <laughs> but I mean, like, I, I'm not afraid of a shadow being. I'm not afraid of a ghost. I ain't afraid of no ghost. I really am not. And so there's really nothing for them to gain by trying that with me. Yeah. So I am don't come for me if I don't send for you. That's right. Ghost. I mean, and if you do, I mean, I'm, I, I told you, I saw a boy in my room talking to my husband, yeah. like a spirit boy leaning over talking. And I'm like, no, sir, young man, you cannot be giving a message to my husband unless you clear that with get out of my room. And I marched him out of my room. He was a seven year old spirit boy. He said his name was generous from Georgia. Did I tell you this story? No. Oh <clears throat> We might have Honey. to talk about that on After Pot. We might. That, this was just a little while ago, but I, I, his, he had this riot of like brown curls, you know, and he was leaning over my husband's bed talking in his ear. And I'm like, this is, I don't approve of, I don't know who you are. You're just a kid, but you got to get out of my room. Like I have, even in spirit, astral mm -hmm, traveling, mm -hmm. I got dominion. And this board's like, okay, I, I, I'm I gotta go. Out. I'm leaving. The street light is so, on and you need to go that's home. That's right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sir, happy to walk and see my husband. I generous. saw my raven the other night. Oh, you did? She, raven is She was on the bed people. with us. So Raven is my dog that I had to put down before Christmas. But um, she was on the bed and Claire was curled up. And it's funny, Claire went over to where Raven usually lays and just mm -hmm. curled up. And she kept moving. And, and finally she moved and then she sort of like, it looked like she wrapped herself around, but nothing and then I, I just kind of looked, hmm. and then I looked, and then I saw, and Raven was there, and she wrapped herself around her. So she clearly oh saw her. She well, so tell there. the people how that happens. Like, did you see that with your third eye, or did you see that, like, did you see energy with your naked vision? So I, I saw with my naked eye something happening, some something there. And then it sort of transitioned to a almost like a negative like image like you know the reverse sort of image and i kind of saw mm, raven mm -hmm. and i just saw her look over at me and i was like oh my god there's my little baby mm -hmm. and so you know i lean forward and i'm like you know because because i love her yeah. and i miss her and claire was just sort of wrapped around her but i think it i almost felt like i sort of was not 100 percent on this plane Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I think th I think that's why I got sort of a mix because I yeah. was kind of here, but maybe third eye kind of not. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's why I kind of saw it in, in such a manner. And every now and then I do see her. So. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, you also mentioned demons. Ooh. Well, because, you know, there are a lot of people that I know in, in my regular life that will you know, if something creepy happens or they feel scared, they just, it's, it's a demon, it's demonic. And right. I don't necessarily buy it in maybe what Hollywood slings it as. I, I don't actually believe in hell per se. I mean, I believe there are, are dimensions and realms and maybe a lot of that might even be what we've brought on and, and why we are there. But, but, you know, you tell me what, what, what is that? Well, you know, I, this is one of those subjects that I don't have a firm answer on because, well, I can say that I don't believe in the Christian version of what a demon is. However, I can tell you that beings and patterns of energy do exist that are absolutely counterintuitive to light or absolutely on the opposite spectrum of God or creator or love. Like, and that's not a judgment. It's really about proximity, about how close or far away something is. And so hell to me is not being proximate to source energy or like when you and you and people who say they've experienced hell, for example, through a near death experience, what they really experienced upon death was a dimension that was a match for what was going on inside of them, because as above, so below. So if you die and you are, you know, a base individual who has bad vibes, <laughs> you are going to go to a dimension that reflects that. That doesn't mean you stay there or have to, because you don't. You can, as soon as you elevate your consciousness, the dimension follows. But so demons, 
I think there are inhuman, I think I lean towards there being inhuman entities, never been a human before, so they're not earthbounds knocking around in the fourth dimension, never been human before, that are anti-light. Do I think they fell from heaven with Satan, like in the big, great, bad? no, I don't. But I, I mean, when Jesus was tossing out demons from people, I mean, I think that's, there's something to that. And when the demon said, my name is Legion, for I come in many, hmm. like that was a demon. I think that was a demon. But I think most experiences people have that are demonic are interactions they're having with their own energy and perceptions and or earthbounds who are just dead people who are making trouble yeah. in the astral plane. That's what I think. I can get down with that. Can you get down with that, my friend? I can get down with that. All right. You well, put it down, agreement. I picked it up. All right. There and you go. that concludes this amazing metaphysical corner. So much fun. It was fun. <laughs>